space for shoes, friends, authors, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, all protocol observed. Uh, dear Vice Chancellor, thank you for that kind introduction. I'm honored to represent my principal, who is the Honorable Minister for Science and Technology, Honorable Monica Mosenero Masanza, who unfortunately uh, couldn't be here today, but she sends her readers. Uh, that's it, and to reiterate, um, Back home, when I'm in Makere, Makere is my home in more ways than one. And I'm proud that this institution is reclaiming its position as that shining light on a hill. Now, whatever I say that you like, you can credit my minister. And what doesn't sit well with you? That would be on me. Uh, that said, I'll go ahead now and uh, read her prepared remarks. So, as she says, uh, it gives her great pleasure to officiate at this centenary book launch by Macquarie University Press. She says, she's, she also feels very much at home whenever she's in my care, that's because she's also a proud alumna of this great university. And secondly, because we at the Science, Technology and Innovation Secretariat are close partners and allies of Makere University. As government, we attach great value to scientific research and education as drivers for innovation and national development. And that is why the government has continued to commit resources in the national budget to support initiatives like the uh, Research and Innovation Fund at Makere University, which has been running, I believe, for the past four years. And we're continuing to give uh, even more support uh, through various initiatives. We're also aware that you're receiving support from other government-funded and development partner-funded research and innovation initiatives. Now, what we want to emphasize is that a look at what your scholars have done, and especially from what has been presented today, shows that what you're doing is it's quite impressive. Uh, but the race is far from over if the outcomes of your research are gathering dust on your bookshelves and in your cabinet drawers. Now, I wouldn't want to say scholarship is worthless if it doesn't create value in society. You can get promoted, you can win more grants, but where the rubber hits the road is when you are adding value to society. Are you making the lives of people better? Are you creating a conscious and transformed society? Are you contributing to reorientation of mindsets? Transformation of our value system? Are you contributing to policy? So besides the intellectual property outputs and other products of your research, we expect you to share your findings with the Uganda taxpayer who uh, most times is financing your work since this is a public institution. You may have done this through policy briefs and other mass media channels, but for a person who needs to know a little bit more, you must go further and that is when a publishing outlet becomes a necessity. Now one may ask, with all the private publishing houses within Uganda and others beyond the borders of Uganda, 
Why does Macquarie University need a publishing house? Granted, there are many outlets for publishing your work, but a university press is a university press. Since many of the local Indian publishers are private, they work for profit. Their focus is on market size. It's therefore logical that they will go into publishing low-hanging fruits, such as primary and secondary school textbooks, which serve a larger population and hopefully bigger markets. Often, these publishers take on materials for tertiary scholars only when they are sponsored. Now, the other option left for us is international publishing. Some private and some public. But this too comes with its own attendant challenges. Of course, there is the politics that comes with vetting your manuscripts and processing them to suit the needs of the international audience. And that is why uh, decolonization uh, becomes even more salient. But then even after crossing this hurdle, you're then faced with the challenge of having to pay high publishing fees, sometimes prohibitively so, to make your article open access. Sometimes when you don't pay, if the publication is proprietary, then your readers are faced with the high price attached to accessing your work. Now, these circumstances make our published work inaccessible to the majority of our target population. Of course, in addition to the fact that they haven't been tailored to that population in the first place. And that's where the university press comes in, because it is funded by the public, and hopefully, as Professor Kakuba said, it is non-profit making. Now, I want to take you up on that prop. Uh, I believe much of it is non-profit making, it is supposed to be self-sustaining in the long term. And we should also compensate the authors. We know writing is a public good, uh, but there should be a way how they can commence lately. Uh, get compensated for their efforts. Now, this means the products have to be pocket friendly, but the press should also make business sense, long term, of course. Now, since this is a university press, its core target population are the scholarly and associated population groups. A national university press, which I believe this can easily turn into, has the addition and plan of aligning its products to the needs of the local population and the national development agenda. You see, um, most times we write in a language that's full of jargon, that is more suited to the scholarly audience, and we forget the local population who should be our primary consumers, the university press can help us to address that need. Now, it is with this in mind that we wish to commend Makere University on this noble effort to establish a viable university press at this premier university. And this should serve as, as an example of other universities in the country on the way to go. Uh, but before they venture into setting up their own publishing houses, we know the implication this may have on quality of products. We can utilize this outlet at this university that Makere has freely availed to us. We are proud of the quality of publications that we have witnessed today and we encourage you to do more. It is important that we strive to maintain international quality standards in our scholarly publications. We must prove to our people and the rest of the world that what is locally produced is not necessarily inferior in quality. I'm in 
informed that some of the publications that have been presented here have also contributed to appointments and promotions, which is a very good thing. Uh, now, this is commendable. Uh, please keep on uh, with that spirit. We want to challenge you, however, to ensure that, and I think our keynote speaker alluded to this, to ensure that most of your publications are available electronically. Uh, it has been said that uh, a small spark uh, can light a fire and cause a, a conflagration capable of consuming forests of intellectual ignorance. Today, uh, electronic media are the chief enablers for this conflagration. I hope that what has begun as an initiative at Makere University can transform this nation through enhancing education, research, and scholarship. Electronically, some of this body of work can be availed by the scholars, gratis, for the benefit of humanity and for future generations across the globe. Finally, uh, we want to take this opportunity to thank the Vice Chancellor, Makere University, and the management team for nurturing and supporting this spirit of innovation. We look forward to seeing more publications in varied disciplines and from beyond the walls of Makere. May I also take this opportunity to encourage this audience to buy and read these books and also be encouraged to submit their own works to Makere University Press for processing. As government, we will continue to support innovations aimed at transforming our lives and we pledge to continue supporting Makere University Press in this noble venture. And with those few words, I'd like to congratulate you all and declare these books